it's something different. It's not, I, I like some of the, I like a lot of the songs, don't get me wrong, but there's a different spirit that operates in the old gospel songs than it is now. Now, here's one thing I think it is. One, it wasn't about, it wasn't commercialized. Two, they weren't pursuing the money. Three, I believe that was, I'm not saying everything was perfect, but I believe there was a heart for unity, a heart for oneness, and somewhere in there, there was a strong heart for God. I'm hearing rumors about a lot of these popular people that's singing worship now, even after that, I, I'm not saying it's true, so I'm, I'm not gonna name names, but they're, they're, they're uh, taking shots doing, in between concerts. They're in the back taking shots, and I ain't talking about water. And, and something is different. See, see, if we allow church to just become some routine, it will become meaningless. We, we would just come. That's why we can come here and not like each other, not speak to each other, be mad, offended, because we need something different. We need something different than what we have been giving God. Because he's given us everything. We need something different than just saying, God, I showed up. God, God, I, you know, we, you know, so, so, you know, it, it's just like, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't come to work late like we do church. We wouldn't just not show up to work like we don't show up to church. I kicked my, my pinky toe last night and I ain't going to church tomorrow. But that same hurt pinky toe don't stop me from running all my errands, going everywhere else. See, we need a heart change where God, we yearn for God again. Where we long for his presence in the house of worship again. That we say, God, we need you and nothing else, God. If we have you, God, that's all we need. That's all we desire. God, that's all we hope is to have you once again in the house of God where we can worship you, God. Hallelujah. Where we can worship your presence, God. Oh, God, your power. Oh, God, your glory. Oh, God, let your glory come again, God. Oh, God, we need you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, we need you. Oh, God, we need you. We need you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we need you. God, when we've lost sight of you, restore our sight, God. Restore our sight, God. God, we put our hearts back on you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. No more just going through the routine, God. No more just going through the motion, God. But we need you, God. We need revive us, oh God. 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 Oh God, wake the dead bones up, God. Wake them up, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wake them up, God. Wake us up, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wake us up, God. Wake us up, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, wake us up, God. Wake us up, God. Oh, God, wake us up, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wake us up, God. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Don't just let church be a routine, God. Don't let our offering of coming in here be in vain, oh, God. I know it's not on you, God. We got to change our hearts. We ask you to change our hearts, oh, God. 
Change us, oh God. Change us, oh God. Change us, oh God. Change us, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Draw us near to you, God. Draw us near to you, God. Draw us near to you, God. Oh, God, make us hungry for you, Jesus. Oh, God, let us long for your presence, oh, God. Oh, God, your power, God, your glory, oh, God. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, God, help us, Jesus. Oh, God. Mm. Oh, God. Let this service mean something more than what we've made ourselves accustomed to, God. Oh, God, we need you. We need you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, I surrender all. I, I surrender all. Oh, no. Oh, I surrender oh, oh. Oh, oh, to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. It's power when you are near. I need the oh, I need the every hour. died 
draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Till my church soul shall find rest. Beyond the river. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved, yes, Jesus loves me, oh, yes, Jesus loves me, yes. Loves me for the Bible sells me so. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today because you care for me. In such a special way, and Lord, I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. Oh, that's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, oh, because you care for me, new mercies, oh God, in such a special way, and yes, I praise you, you're worthy, you're worthy, I magnify your name. Oh, and that's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart. Oh, my heart, my mind, oh, my soul belongs to you. <laughs> You paid the price for me way back on Calvary, and yes, I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. Oh, that's why my heart is filled. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, you've been so good. So many wonderful things you've done. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart. That's why my heart is filled. Change my heart, oh God. 
Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Is he truly master, savior? Yes, he's Jesus. Like a fragrance refreshing after the rain. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away <laughs> But there's something about Jesus Jesus, Jesus, take it down. Oh, there's something. The name, He's Master, He's Savior, He's Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Oh, he's Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. The kings and kingdoms shall all pass away, but there's something, oh, there's something, there's truly something. I believe when I call on the name, there's something. The situation changed. There's something. Oh, 
I'm set free, there's something. When I call on you, you'll answer, there's something. About that name. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to make this to the glory of God. There is something about that name. I don't know where the Holy Ghost is going to take us, but I want to be follow him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you know, I've recognized something. There's just been some things that I needed God to deal with my heart on. There have been some areas in my life that I said, God, you have to change my heart. Because if you don't change it, it's not going to be right. God, if you don't deal with my heart, and we know we, I'm not you know, talking about some, some sin, secret sin I've been living. That, I'm just saying there are some things I recognize that were in my heart that, God, only you can change it, God. Only you can make it right. And I believe that's the case with the, within all of us as believers. There's just some areas we need God to change. We need God to make a change in our hearts. Amen. See, because we, we – I ain't going to say we, I, 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 somewhere in the body, we've grown accustomed, people have grown accustomed to either living in sin, and it doesn't bother them, and we've grown accustomed to not correcting sin when we see it. We just let it go, we just pretend it doesn't exist, we just go on, and, and, and we just, it just runs rampant, and, and you might say, well, that's condemning, see, we listen to the world too much. And, and we've allowed the world to tell us what's condemnation. Telling the truth and identifying sin is not condemnation. See, the reason why people see sin as condemnation is they don't want to come out of it. So how they justify it in their mind, the first thing that comes up is you are condemning me. You're judging me. You, you don't love me. No, no, that's not. When, I, when the truth is told, uh, uh, you are going to face a, a, a judgment that if you don't repent of these things, guess what? Uh, uh, you're going to face a severe penalty. You know, a lawyer is obligated to tell you what the law actually says and if you if your if your lawyer doesn't tell you they can be disbarred they can they can a uh, doctor can face a malpractice suit if they don't tell you exactly what's going on with you and how to deal with it and, and see if, if we as a church don't tell people the truth the blood is going to be on our hands we're going to we, we're going to be like the watchman that didn't warn the people and God said the blood will be on your hand if you don't tell them and warn them about what's to come and we got to be watchmen on the wall we 
Instead of being watchmen, we've been asleep. We've been satisfied with just coming to church. We've been happy with the offering, the praise, and coming and going. But now God has said, I need my church to wake up and become the church that I've called them to be. I need my church to be organic. I need my church to be authentic. I need my church to be full of the Holy Spirit. I don't need any more. I, 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 I need to get the laziness, the slothfulness, the lack of diligence, the inconsistency. He said, I need it all broken so that you can become all that I have ordained for you to be in the house of worship. That when you come into the house of God, it's no longer a vain showmanship. It's no longer just a, an act, some we put together, some we try to put on our best to look good in church. And God said, I've seen through all of this, this pretense, this hypocrisy, this false faces. I've seen through it all. I've seen the fake smiles. I've seen the lack of love. I've seen the strife, the envy, the contention. He said, I've seen it all, and I need the people of God to change their hearts, to change their mind, and get back to where I need them to be. See, we've been comfortable with this soft cotton wash Christianity, cotton ball, uh, all candy, apple Christianity, and God said, I need some hearts that will long after me going forward. I don't care who leaves, who stays, what they give, what they don't give. I need the heart of my people to come back to me, to come back to me and not stay out in the world and live for them and give more time and energy and effort to the world and less time to me. You're too tired to come in church. You're too tired to give. You're too tired to love, but you can give all this stuff to the world. He said, I need my people to come back to me to come back to me. That's what God is, I need my people. We started back up fasting. People having a fit, because we, we come to church one extra day a month to pray. I hear why pastor do it on that day? What's wrong with us coming together to pray? Have we lost our desire? Do we know prayer is the birthing of ministry, the birthing of God moving, the birthing of hearts coming to repentance? That's what it said. My people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. He, Jesus said, man, I'll always to pray and not faint. And now we're, 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 we're scared of prayer. We don't want prayer. We, you know, that's the problem we said was in the, in the, in the school, that they taking prayer out of school. But now we want prayer and fasting out of the church. I repent because we should have never stopped having prayer, even through the pandemic. We should have never stopped it. So I'm standing before you now repenting. We should have never, we should have been, why are we going to stop fasting and praying when a pandemic is going on? The church should be full of prayer when the pandemic is killing thousands. Full of prayer when our government is saying men can go in the women's bathroom and women can go in the men's bathroom. We should be full of prayer for our nation, for our government. But we so comfortable, we so comfortable in our new car, new housing, new clothes. We don't care about the corruption that, that, that is coming on the earth. Woo! Do you see the spiritual depravity in our nation? People say, and some people here have told me, and we just let them, left them alone, let things be okay. You can't leave sin alone and think sin is going to be tamed. You can't let sin go unchecked and think sin is going to stay the way that it is. People are gone from, we just want a union. We want a marriage. Now we want to go in the bathroom. Now if I'm a man and I think I'm a woman, I want to go into a women's prison. You think sin stays the way it is? But where's the church? Well, Pastor, you got 51 minutes for kickoff. 
and I need you to be done by 12 so I can get home. Is that what, that's what the house of God has become? That we build our schedule around everything else? Has it become, has church become so meaningless that it means nothing? Us, us assembling together means nothing anymore? That we're not seeking the presence and the power and the glory of God that can pull down strongholds, destroy yokes, break chains, lift burdens, set the captive free, open the eyes of the blind? Are we just, are we just, have we lost our heart for God that we, we have a fit when we got to do something a little different? About, uh, about our worship and we got to maybe come in for prayer we become so sophisticated we can't even show up for church we just watch it I, I just watch it online and I'm eating my bacon and eggs and pancakes we got to get a heart for God that's all that matters. What my pre what matters is we have a heart for God. If we lose that, we will treat each other bad. We'll treat our families bad. We'll treat the, the lost bad. We will lose a lot if we lose our heart for the living God. We were dead in sin. Christ had to quicken us, give us his love and his power. He had to quicken us to bring us to where he wanted us to be. It took a resurrected power to bring us back alive. If we lose, even Paul said that we will, in the last days, there'll be perilous times. And the perilous time is not what we see in the world, the killing. That is, but the most dangerous thing is when the church is no longer the church that's worshiping and acknowledges Christ as Lord and Savior and Master. When we no longer sit under his rule, when we no longer want to sit at his feet, when we no longer want to bow before him, we will lose so much if we no longer I want Jesus to reign and rule. And don't deceive yourself in thinking that natural things define your relationship with God. Don't deceive yourself. That doesn't, that doesn't make you righteous. Doesn't make any of us righteous. While we're thankful for everything, righteousness comes through obedience. Righteousness is obeying the Father. Nothing else. Nothing else matters. What are we going to say? Well, God, I just thought I was in right standing because I prayed for a Mercedes and I got it. I prayed for a new house and I got it. So I just knew I was in right standing. But what about all the sin? I didn't think that mattered anymore. I, I, don't, I didn't think that really meant anything anymore. It does. It means a lot. It means a whole lot. Saints, we got to get our hearts right. We got to get our hearts right. We got to get our hearts back longing for God, loving God. Oh, we can't lose a heart for God. That's the problem. We've lost it. And we got to say, God, see, the blessing about God, he's a restorer. He's a restorer. I, we're not we're not preaching this as though all hope is lost or th that we're saying because there is hope in God. In the book of Joel, in the Old Testament, starting in verse twelve, chapter two. Starting in verse twelve. In the book of Joel, starting in verse 12, no, Joel, Joel, Joel. This isn't a message. This isn't even how our normal service goes. But I do want to thank God for all our visitors. And it's not normally how it goes, but we want it to go how the Holy Ghost wants us to go. In the book of Joel, Chapter 2, starting at verse 12. 
Everybody have it? It says, therefore, also now, says the Lord. See, th that's one thing, I mean, not the only, but one thing I really love about God is his mercy, his goodness, and his grace. It says, therefore, also now, says the Lord. He says, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. So we, let, let's just examine this verse. Because as I was sitting there and we were in praise, I had, you know, going to minister on believing God. But God pressed this verse upon my spirit. He says, therefore also now says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. The first thing we we'll notice that I want to bring out in this verse is the brokenness that's needed. What do you mean by brokenness? See, brokenness, there's a brokenness where the world breaks me, but there's also a brokenness where my heart breaks for God again. And we're talking about the one where our hearts break for God again. What do you mean, preacher, when you say your heart breaks for God? You recognize that there is a Holy Spirit within you that has drawn you back to God in the way that he wants you to be drawn to him. You recognize he's saying put away the games, put away the things in your heart, put away the things you've been doing, put away the way you've been living, put away what you've been saying, put away what you've been thinking, put away how you were hurt as a child, put away how you were hurt in your last marriage, put away how you were hurt in your last church, put away how the, 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 your job hurt you. Put all that away and allow me to change your heart and bring that heart to me and, and surrender everything. Put away the anger, the unforgiveness. Put away the fear. Put all that away and come back to me because fear keeps us from God. Fear keep, these all, Many of these things keep us from giving God our all because we're living a fragmented life. He says the brokenness will lead to fasting. The brokenness will lead to weeping. The brokenness will lead to mourning. Do you remember what Mary, how Mary wiped Jesus' feet? The Bible says she wiped his feet with her tears. The brokenness. This woman was demonically, was broken in, in the world, but she came to a brokenness and realized, I'm sitting at the feet of the only one that can give me eternal life. I'm sitting at the feet with, of the richest king of the world who can give me everything I need. I'm broken now because all these men I mess with uh, my whole life where I've been, now I'm at the feet of the one who will love me like no other. I'm at the feet of the one who won't treat me like I'm this and that. do will treat me like I'm a dog. I'm, a, I'm at the feet of the one who will love me. I'm broken. Are you broken today again before Jesus because of what he can do in your life? When you recognize he's the only one, the only one, are you broken? Weeping. God. I need you. But God says, when you turn, when you turn, hallelujah, he says, when you turn, I'm not looking for you to turn like Lot's wife. See, Lot's wife turned to escape. But even though she turned to escape, she kept looking back. She looked back at what God says get away from. How many of us have turned, but we turned back to look back? Oh, I missed that. Oh, I, I, I don't know if I'm ready to give that up. I know I've ran into stuff walking and looking back, not paying a, attention. That ever happened to you and you just walking? In the store somewhere, you look back, you keep walking. Next thing you know, you run into something. See, 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 God said, but when you turn, <laughs> see, 
see, in order for you to turn to God with all your heart, your heart has to change. You don't break that relationship for two days. And they text you after two days to how much they miss you. And they right back staying at the house. You don't, you don't throw away all the alcohol for two days and go back and to the liquor store to refill, get double what you had before. See, when you, but when you turn, he said, you got to turn to me with all your heart. You, you said, now he said, when you, he said, turn ye even to me with all your heart. I told y'all when I first got saved, this is when I got saved, I wasn't pastoring. Some of y'all be like, how long ago was that? When I first got saved, I was lying. I was in a relationship, but I was lying. And I went to Pastor Ellis Bible study. Never met him before. He preached on lying. I heard that word. I went back to my dorm, and I, I, cle- I, I started clearing up everything. See, because when you turn, you got to turn with a change. You got you got to be determined. I'm going to change this thing. I'm going to give up these things that I don't need to hold on to. I don't, I don't need them anymore. That's how you turn. See, many times we turn, but we turn only for a few days. We go right back. But he says, now when you turn to me, you got to turn with all your heart. And, and when was the last time the church weep for sin? You might well say, it's not my problem that, that, that the government is trying to push young children to have sex changes at 12, 14. That's not, yes, it is our problem. We need to pray against this wickedness. Well, pastor, you can't call it that. Come what may, it is wickedness. Dress it up, put whatever you want to call it, it's wickedness. We got to have some weeping. God, change the hearts of these parents, change the heart of these children, change the heart of our government, and God, turn their hearts away from this wickedness. Turn it away, God, so they no longer, see, you don't realize, I, I know this is a lost word in the church, but trust me, God's judgment is coming against this unrighteousness. God's judgment is coming against this unrighteousness. You might say, well, when is it? I know God sent many prophets. I was When you read the Old Testament, you don't realize a lot of these prophets were in the same uh, time frame. But he, said, they, he just kept repeating. Why? Because God is long-suffering. He, it, it's not, it, it, you know, God is not like in the world. They just want to, he, wanna, he wants to flex his muscle and be a bully and show you how nobody can, out, out, can whoop him. He's long-suffering. He said, people really don't know what it's like to face my wrath. They don't know what my wrath is. Right now what they're experiencing is a wrath with mixture. It's mixed with mercy. That, that, you know, when, when God judged Israel, you know, I was mixed with mercy because he said, I'm not going to destroy you completely. I'm going to leave some of you here to continue my promise. See, God, God, we're, we're experiencing God's wrath with mixture, meaning he's not going to wipe everything out. But a day is coming. You don't see the, the, that's why I don't I don't worry about all the climate issues. Because God said when the time is up, it's going to everything on melt with the fervent heat. There's not going to be enough scientists, uh, uh, climate so or whatever to, to, to know what happened. It's going to melt with the fervent heat by the ever living word of God. So we got to have, so, so he said, you got to turn to me. And that word turn means to turn back. To go or come back to a place, conditional activity where one has been before. Wow. So we've been here before. We had a heart for God before, but somewhere it got lost. But the good thing is God knows just how to help you find it. My God, I love God because he knows just how to help you find it. Now, I'm not sitting here telling you that I, I that been, have not been times in my life where I say, okay, God, I got to get, get, get refocused on you. 
I'm losing my focus on you. I got to get back focused on you, God, because there's too much going on. So, so we got to turn our hearts back to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bring my towel, baby. I mean, Sister Gregory. He says, turn to me. I pray today that the Holy Spirit will provoke our hearts to turn back to him. This might be the, but see, we need to turn our heart. Young people, if you watch even on social media, if you get on social media, expose everything but one-eighth of your body, and you claim to be a Christian, you need to turn back to God. You get on that, on, be with friends and cuss and act ungodly and unholy and wicked, you need to turn back to God. Now, how you going to, you say, well, well, I'm just with my friend. Why you got to, why you got to act like you don't know God in front of them? What's so special about them that you can defile God before them? I, man, I, y'all don't get me drunk. I, I got to go to church in the morning. I don't like to go to church drunk. You shouldn't want to be drunk anyway. You're a believer. When, is, when does the Holy Ghost come in and tell you, I ain't listening to old Pastor Gregory uh, talking about all this stuff. I'm just going to do what I do. See, you're not, you're not just doing what you're doing. You're doing what God doesn't want you to do, and that's the problem. If you, if you, are, if you are own a company and your employees don't do what you want them to do, you're not going to be happy. If we're Christians and we don't do what God wants us to do, he's not going to be pleased. Right or wrong. But God is saying, now I need my people to turn to me. I don't need you just to come to church. I don't need you just to show up. He said, I don't even, I don't even need your offering. What I need is a, your offering of your heart first and foremost. I need that more than anything. I need your heart to be offered before me in fasting and weeping and mourning. Be, I don't care. I'm just going to do what I want to do. I have, I've had people tell me that. I'm going to do what I want to do. The problem is doing what we want to do and, and opposes God, he takes, a, he takes issue with that. See, we got to get back to, to loving God. And if we don't, we got to ask God why. Verse 13, he says, not only with fasting and weeping, he said, but I need you to rend your hearts and not your garments. Most of us remember the book of Jonah, right? In the book of Jonah, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. Just fast forward, he actually went. He brought the word to the king of Nineveh. The Bible says the king tore his rended or tore his garment, which rend just means to tear. But not only did the king rend his garments, the king tore his heart too. Because the king that day said, no, and he, he even said animals. That's a serious fast. You know, I'm putting it in my own words, ain't nobody eat nothing for three days. We're going to get this thing right. Now, here's the thing. These people did not even belong to God. They, they weren't in covenant. They, 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 they were, this is not the Israelites. They were not even in covenant. But he said to them, he said, if you don't change, and the king said, we're not going to eat anything for three days, who knows if God will change his heart and turn away his judgment? See, when you come to God with brokenness, with fasting and weeping and mourning and say, God, we, I need you to change my heart. When David realized all that he had done, 
concerning Uriah, all the sin, David was broken. David didn't say, well, I'm king and I can make these type of decisions. David was broken. That's what Psalm 51 is about. Church, I, I, I'm not just saying this to you, I promise. I'm saying, I'm preaching to me too. We got to get broken before God. We, we got to get a heart for God again. Any way we've lost it, any way we, we, it, it has been misdirected, we need to get it back. We need to get it back. It, I, 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 y'all know I said it before, it doesn't matter where you go, what church you go to. You got to have a heart for God. You got to have a heart for God. Why do you think so many pastors uh, secretly or openly are in adultery? There's no heart for God. Well, they can preach good. It doesn't matter. They need a heart for God. Why do you think people allow men that, that, that's homosexual to be leading choirs and singing it just because they can make it sound good? There's no heart for God. You, why do you need, why you say that? Because you can't allow just sin to run rampant and go unchecked. It has a, a spiritual degradation in the body of Christ. It, it degrades the body of Christ. This is not about a person. This is not about hating people. It's the effect that sin will have on the body. That's why Paul warned the Corinthian church, a little leaven leaven of the whole lump. I'm willing to bet that if a pastor is in known adultery, nothing has been done, there's no discipline, I'm willing to bet that there are a lot of adulterers in that body because like is going to be get like. I can, if I can come into church and feel comfortable in my sin, I will it won't be addressed. If it's addressed, it'll be like Lot did with his sons. It'll sound like a joke and nothing serious. There's no gravity to it. And so the hearts are not willing to change. So I can sit here and be comfortable and text my, my the person I'm messing with or they sitting right on the next aisle and nothing in my heart convicts me to ever change. Why? Because I'm in an environment where, where a little leaven can leaven up the whole lump. But I'm happy because the church is growing. Don't let church growth, church decline, deceive you. You judge everything by the word of God. Jesus had a mega following. He did. But he came to a point. Maybe he said to himself, I'm tired of all the phonies following me. I know they don't, know, I know they don't have a heart for me, so I'm going to do what, what we did with Gideon. I'm going to start dwindling the numbers. He says to them, he says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. And after he finished talking, the Bible said many, not just a few, it said many of his disciples walked away from him and did no longer walk with him because of that one saying, now all this time, They've been with them. All this time they've seen the healing, the miracles he's done. But this one phrase caused them to turn away. Their heart was never with him. And I believe he knew that. I don't want us to be here. I mean, just sit here and not have a heart for God. I don't want us just sit here and look at our watches. And the only thing we remember is what time it was every time I checked my watch. And I didn't get the word. The word didn't provoke me. The word didn't provoke me unto love and good works. We need a heart for God. We need a heart for God. That's why he says, and rend your heart. He said, I've seen enough. This is what God is saying in his verse. I've seen enough people tear their garments, but not their hearts. I've seen enough of it. God said, I've seen enough tears at the altar but no tears in the heart. I've seen enough mourning out outwardly, but no mourning from the heart. I've seen it, but I need, I need to see it from the heart. I need to see the heart change. If, your, if our hearts don't change, something, something happened a few months ago that really broke me. Not, it wasn't just one thing. It was several things that happened. They really broke me. And as a pastor, I had to take a 
wrong look at some things. And I said, well, Lord, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of, of fighting. I just, I just feel like certain things I had to fight about. And I just said, Lord, I'm tired. I, I, I'm, I was just, I was at a point of brokenness. I was hurt, struggling. And I just said, I, I was just, I said, I can't, if I have to fight for the faith, I will, God. That's not what I'm talking about. But I don't want to just feel like I got to fight about things. And, and I, but I had to take a look, not at other people. But at my response. Not at what other people are doing, but at my response. Because if my response doesn't please God, then he has a problem with me. If, if it's, not, it, it, it's not about, yes, I wasn't liking what was being done, but I had to take a look at my response because the goal of my response had to please my Father, which art in heaven. That's all that matters. He'll take care of the rest. He'll, he'll deal with the rest. But my heart need to be right with him. So I had to rend my heart. Because if I came in here angry, if I went home angry, my wife used to always say, I used to come home from, uh, from uh, Target, working in the warehouse, it was hot. And I'm just, I mean, I'm sweating. And, you know, I was young then. I bought a car with no air conditioning in it. I, I'm driving home in a sweat. And, you know, the traffic was stopped. All right, there on 167 coming home in the summer, and you no wind blowing in, you just sweating. And I'll come home, I didn't want, I need about 30 minutes, and nobody talking to me. Y'all remember them, them trucks, how, how hot he's being in that warehouse? <laughs> sweating. And, I, you know, and, and so, but, but see what, I had to, my wife said she should just pray because she needs to talk to me. And I, I didn't want to be taught. But see, but, but we, uh, my point is, I, we grew from that. You have to grow. You can't stay in the same place and doing the same thing. You have to grow. You, you can't just, ex if, if my heart is wrong, I need to change it. I, I know we you don't people don't like to say these sayings because we said it all the time growing up in church, but he is still a heart fixer and a mind regulator, Brother James. That's what he is. He's still that to us today. Amen. Hallelujah. But he says now, 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 he didn't stop there to he said, now here, this is what I love. He says, and rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. Here's why. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. You know, there are just, there are areas, you know, growing up, I mean, especially raising my children, I wish I would have showed more patience. You know, you, you grow from that. I mean, that's why grandparents become better. You, you recognize you don't have to, you know, but, you know, but, you know, you recognize, okay, I could have been more gentle, more kind, and said it a little nicer than that, than I did. I didn't have to jack them up on the walls. But you, I'm being serious, I'm telling you, but you learn. You learn, and you grow. But we think that God <laughs> doesn't jack us up on the wall. But he's slow to anger and of great kindness. He repenteth him of the evil. I mean, he would turn from it if we turn to him. See, God is not, you know, I, 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 God is not sitting there and saying, I can't wait to show them how, how much my, what my wrath can do to them. I, I love the verse in Proverbs. It even says, when you see your, uh, God's judgment coming on your enemy, he said, don't, the Bible says, don't rejoice. He said, because if you rejoice, he said, the word said he'll take away that judgment. You know why? Because God, because God, is, he takes no pleasure in, destroy, in the delight in destroying the wicked. He takes no delight in destroying the wicked. So 
think about if we turn to God, what are you going to experience? Graciousness, mercifulness, slow to anger, kindness. And you're going to see God turn away evil, turn away his judgment, turn away his chastening if we turn to God. That's why we need to turn back to him. Verse 14. Who knoweth if he will re return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? Verse 15, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. You know, just certain things I, I said, you know, and I said again, I repent for us. Stopping our fasting during the COVID. Because we should have never stopped. Come who will come. Stay at home who will. But we should have kept praying and fasting. We need it. We need it. You don't. You don't <laughs> this is this what people did when these things came. They came together and prayed. The church should. Let's, let's get together and pray. Let's, let's pray. We, we got to stand in every corner. That's what you. We, it don't matter. Let's just get together and pray. Why do we, because we serve we serve a God that's greater than COVID. We serve a God that, that's greater than every every booster they can come up with. Now, if you don't believe God greater than the boosters, explain to me why. But He's greater. He says, "Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation." Assemble the elders. Gather the children. Don't leave your children at home. I couldn't wake little Johnny up. You know how to get little Johnny up. You got him up for practice. You got him up for school. You got him up for breakfast. You got him up for doctor appointment. But you can't get him up for church. Gather the children. And those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest, the minister of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say, Unto his people, behold, I send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith. And I will make you, excuse me, and I will make no more, I will, excuse me, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. When we turn to God, people, when we turn back to God, he certainly will turn to us. That's all God wants. I believe we, these are, I heard somebody say it, there are some great things God wants to do through his body. We got to be ready for it. There's some, some, some great revivals, whatever, deliverances, salvation, healing, miracles God wants to do through his body. But we have to be ready. If I'm looking for my miracle in the world, I won't find it in church. If I'm looking for just the world to produce my miracles, life to produce my miracles, if I'm looking for the lottery to produce my miracle, I'm going to miss God. Sometimes you can't even go get, get, your, get your, what you want to get out the convenience store. Give me, give me two of them 20s. Give me two of them 40s. Give me, give me happy lotto, whatever they call them. Can't even get, get something and get out the store. But see, we, I, I'm saying to the church, let's get our heart back right with God. I'm not judging us. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not, I, I don't, not one person coming to my mind. But what I am saying, God is saying, let's get our hearts right with him. And I believe today the Holy Spirit is showing us individually where our hearts are not right and where he wants them to be. And I'm encouraging you, the day that you hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in a provocation in the day of temptation when your father tempted me and proved me and saw my works for the years. He said, I was grieved with that generation. And I said, they've erred in their heart. And he said, they have not known my ways. Then he said, so I swear my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. God wants us, people. 
He wants our hearts with him. We know what's been distracting us. We know how we get pulled away. We know what causes us not to pray. We, we know what's causing us to no longer long for God. And God said, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run with, with patience this race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now set out at the right hand of God. He even went so far to say, for consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself. Why does he say that? Because we allow so much of the world to affect our relationship with God. And we got to allow God to affect our relationship with the world. That's why it's so easy for us to say. It, it, it becomes, when, you, when we're not seeking God, it becomes easy to substitute. What do you mean? That's why our worship looks like the world. We're looking at what the world does as far as music. We say, well, we need that in the church. I remember when uh, Snoop Dogg came out with a gospel album. I said, uh, I made a comment. And people, you know, they said stuff to me. I mean, why do we have to accept what, 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 they, what the world wants, everything they do? There's no reverence for God in his heart, no honor to God. A man who openly admits how much uh, weed he smokes. I'm not saying God can't change hearts. When Kanye was doing his thing, I said, just be patient. People have said, you judging him. That's why people don't come. Just be patient. I, I'm just, I'm not judging. I'm just saying, do you see, still see fruit in Kanye for Christian, for Christ? You just got to, I'm not judging. I mean, you just, you, you got to be just patient and discerning. Let the fruit come forth. And we just, we just give everybody a platform that say they're Christian now. I guarantee you some of these same preachers that left, put them on stage, if you and I were to go in and say, I'm Christian, let me preach in your church. Mm -mm, I don't know you. But we got to get a heart for God. We don't need celebrities. We need Christians that follow Christ. We need, we need to follow Christ. We'll stop there. Prayerfully, God has dealt with our hearts today. Uh, that's, my tr that's my prayer. If y'all want, I can preach the message I have typed out too. <laughs> now, we're going to stop right there. But nevertheless, we thank God for today. We thank God for his word. We thank the Lord for what has transpired. And I say again, maybe there's an urgency. Let's not leave church the same way we came. Let's not leave church, come in church with a I don't care attitude or it doesn't matter. And, and, and I like to say this because I don't want us to mistake. Let's not treat our relationship with God, not just coming to church, but our whole relationship with God. Let us not treat it like it's nothing. It's valueless. Let's not just pray and don't, don't have a heart to change, a heart to please him. Because it's not just coming to church that matters. It's the whole relationship with God. I mean, I, we've been, my wife and I have been married for over 27 years now, and she, she, we don't just expect each other to come home and not talk. Well, I made it home. What else you want? God wants the whole relationship. He wants our whole relationship. That's what pleases him. Amen. But if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, and you recognize, God, my heart is void without you. You know, that's what drew me to God. I was in the military. I, you know, nothing majorly bad was going on in my life. I wasn't in a bad state. I had friends, was doing what I wanted to do. But no matter how much I did it, as I be 
begin to draw close, I was, there was an emptiness there. No, none of the alcohol, the pleasures of life, they, they weren't as fulfilling as I thought they were. And I read something is missing until God opened my heart to Jesus, I knew that's what was missing. I knew it was Jesus. I knew I said, it's him alone. It, it changed my life. It changed the, the it, it changed how, what, uh, about what satisfied me. It changed me completely. So you might be sitting here today and say, my life, I mean, things are seemingly going well. Um, you know, no major problems, but I just don't feel like fulfilled. And that's because you're missing Jesus. So we invite you today that if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to accept him as your Lord and Savior, we invite you today to come up. Anyone here today, you want to make Christ your Lord and Savior. Make Christ your Lord and Savior. If you're here today and you've given your life to Christ, and you say, I want to make this my church home, but let me pause. The doors for salvation are still open. If you're sitting there saying, I need to get up and surrender to Christ, and you, you're, you, the doors are still open, you're more than welcome to come up and give your life to Christ. If you're here today and you want to make this your church home, you believe this is where God is leading you and directing you. You want to come up and make that known. You can come up and say, I want this to be my church home as well. You can, if you already say you can, you can make this your church home, or if you're not saved, you can give your life to Christ and make this your church home. The reason why we separate is because giving your life to Christ is more important than joining the church. What's the most important thing is giving your life to Christ. And we do encourage you to find a church home. But we want you to give your life to Jesus. Amen. So if you want to, come up. Amen. Come up and, and surrender your life. Make this your church home, whatever it is. We know we serve a good God. We serve a good God. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Anyone else? You want to come up for prayer. You need prayer. You believe in God for something. You want us to agree with you. Anyone? Anyone? So we certainly thank God. Amen. 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 All right, all right. Praise God. Come on, Sophie. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you. I, I can make it all right. But praise God. We have here Sister Brenda Broadway and Brother Glenn Bailey. They're both becoming members here of the House of Refuge. Amen. Amen. So we want to welcome you. Amen. To the House of God. Amen. Amen. We appreciate you. And we, you know, we want to welcome you to your church home, and we want you to feel comfortable, relaxed, and we want you to praise the Lord with us together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do either of you have anything you'd like to say? Praise God. Well, we're glad to have you, sir. Amen. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. Well, on behalf of the House of Refuge and uh, uh, my wife and all the leaders here, we want to say welcome. Yeah, again, we want you to feel at home. We want you to join in, be a part of the ministry, and let God help you grow and you help the others grow as well. Amen? Amen. Uh, here's uh, Sister Gail right here and Sister Ruby. They're going to get with you all after church and get some information, you know, as you become members uh, so we can, you can be a part of our contact system. And so, but we do welcome you. You all want to sit right here. We're going to fellowship with you a little bit after church. If you all want to just sit right here, but they're going to get with you. Amen. Amen. So we have some... Uh, few people that wants prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I can get her to. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. What's her name? Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you now. We lift up the, the need that Stephanie brought before us. God, give her strength and grace, O oh God, to uh, render, to surrender to your will concerning her mother, God. Father, we know, God, how uh, a child loves their mother. And, Father, we ask you right now to give her strength as she goes through this process. God, if your healing virtue does not intervene, God, we're trusting you to give her the strength she needs, O oh God, the grace Everything that she needs, God, the Lord said, all is going to be well. You can take comfort and strength in him. Yeah, e grieving is not easy, but you can take comfort and strength in him every day. Amen. Amen. So we, we want to encourage you to be strong, to continue to believe God, to give you strength day to day. Don't give up. Don't lose hope because God is still faithful. Amen. Amen. Keep smiling. Keep believing God. Amen. 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you lift up Brother Johnson, Father. God, we ask you right now to give him strength in his body, grace and favor, Lord God. Minister, oh God, to his every need. Help him in every area, Lord God. Your word says, if we acknowledge you in all our ways, you shall direct our path. And so, Father, touch our brother, strengthen him, give him and his wife wisdom, oh God, as, they're, as they have their grandsons here, Father God. Pour your wisdom and knowledge into their life, the, everything they need to impart into these young men, Father. We are thankful that he's willing to take them, oh God, and, and bring them to the church, oh God, and, and let them hear the word, Father. We pray that that word will even take root in their hearts, touch their mother, Lord God, as she uh, is recovering, oh God. And, Father, we just thank you, Father. We bless you let them stay encouraged lord god let them not grow weary and well doing let them speak life unto those young men and lord we just pray that this fruit that is being imparted into them now will remain with them in jesus name we pray amen 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 father we just come before you we lift up bobby right now in the name of jesus God, you are our strength, oh God. You are wisdom, oh God. Father, you, you even control our thoughts, oh God. So we ask you now to minister to Bobby. Help her, aid her, strengthen her, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we just pray that you would touch her mind, her body, her soul, Lord God. Give her remembrance, oh God. Everything that she needs, God, we're trusting you, Lord God. We're trusting you to minister to her, Father, and help her, Lord. Thank you for Sister Debbie uh, being a blessing to her strengthening her helping her in every way father and lord we just thank you for this father we bless you lord god you're so good and you're faithful lord god and we know you won't fail in this situation oh lord in jesus name we pray amen 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 god bless you all right thank you sir so praise god all right, we know we did things a little out of order. We want to yield to our visitors visiting with us for the first time. We thank God for you, and we certainly appreciate you being here. Do any of our visitors have anything they'd like to say at this time? Any of our visitors? Well, if not, we thank God for you. We appreciate you, sir. It's good to meet you. Good to meet you all. God bless you. Appreciate you. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to get ready to uh, close, but before we do, we're going to take up offering. Amen. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. All right. Um, yes, as a reminder, um, as a re well, we're going to go ahead and do our announcements too, right? All right. So we're going to, uh, as you're getting together, go ahead and play our morning announcement. We're kind of out of sync, but God is still good. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to House of Refuge Ministries. These are our announcements. Worship through giving. You can give to the House of Refuge Ministries by giving online at hrm.church. Also, by using the Givelify app on your smartphone, just go to the House of Refuge Ministries in Jacksonville, Arkansas. You can also give by Cash App at dollar sign HRM Church. You can also give by mail at P.O. Box 5268, Jacksonville, Arkansas 72078. God bless and thank you for your support. Join us every Monday at 6 p.m. for Monday Manna. We will be live on Facebook and YouTube. Join us for Christian Growth every Sunday at 9.15 a.m. Join us for prayer and fasting every first Thursday at 6 o'clock p.m. Our church fellowship and appreciation luncheon will be held on January 29th after service. Please email all church meetings, practices, and events to events at hrm.church. Always stay connected. Never miss a moment. Watch us live, online, or on Facebook every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. This concludes your HRM morning announcements, where we're ministering to the needs of the whole person. And, uh, before we, you know, we want to keep uh, Sister Angela in prayer. Um, we, uh, she was taken, she was in the back where she, they took her to the hospital uh, right before service started. Her blood pressure was real low, so we want to keep her in prayer. Uh, I know they're going to go check on her as well. Uh, just reminding you, did see it up there this fifth Sunday. This is this fifth Sunday, which will be uh, January the 29th. We're going to have a church fellowship after service. We're going to serve food. Just an appreciation for all the members, all the workers. We thank God for you. So we're going to do that on January the 29th. That's going to be after service. If you did not get a text, it may be because we don't have the right number. If you did not get a text uh, and you would like to come, please let me know today the number of people that are coming so that uh, we can um, have your information, have your have account, so we can get enough food for everyone. So that's going to be on the fifth Sunday uh, of this month. Uh, so uh, be ready for that. That's January the 29th after service. Amen. Amen. Uh, we did do our first prayer at nine. I mean, after it starting at ten o five today. After we got done with Christian growth, again with Christian growth is starting at nine fifteen. We're going to end at ten. At ten o five, we're going to come in for prayer uh, in the back fellowship hall, praying for our service going forward. Uh, we still are going to have morning prayer at eight thirty, uh, but we're going to also be praying at that time as well. Amen. Amen. So just keep those things in mind, and also. Uh, we're trying to keep track of all the meeting and events and stuff that's going on in church. So if you do have a meeting or an event, uh, please email that or uh, get in touch with Sister Gregory so that uh, you can text her or email her so that she can get it on our calendar so there won't be any scheduling conflicts with anybody. So we're trying to go forward with that, just make sure uh, all the stuff is on a calendar so that we can have, we know there's no conflict in scheduling uh, in the church. Amen. 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 All right. We want to again welcome our two new members. Thank God for you and our visitors. We appreciate you all coming out. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for the offering we have received, oh God. Thank you for every hand and heart that's willing to pour into your kingdom and your ministry. God, thank you for what we were able to do and able to do through the, the hearts of your people. And Father, we, we uh, pray that you would turn a hundredfold to all those who give, willing to give, or even may not have to give at this time, God. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all, we're going to dismiss in just a second. Just a second. So uh, we're going to get ready to dismiss. It's good to see some familiar faces. Brother Brandon, good to see you, man. Amen. 
and Brother Ty, good to see you. All right, it's good to see him and so many others, and we thank God for each and every person, so we're going to get ready to dismiss. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God turn it, your heart to him, and may you be used by God to bring glory, honor, and praise to him. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and bless you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Be blessed. Go forward and give God your all in Jesus' name.